Hi all, it's good to see you here again. Today's video is about 10 ways the first orbital flight of Elon Musk's new generation rocket Starship can go wrong. Ideally, everything will go according to plan. The super heavy first stage booster will light its engines and send the Starship into space, where it will accelerate just a little tad under orbital speed for a nice re-entry and landing around Hawaii. But let's be real, Starship is still a prototype and a lot of things have and will go wrong. That's how SpaceX learns how to build safe and efficient rockets. I've come up with a list of 10 most likely ways things can go south during orbital test flight. Tell me if you think I've missed some. As always, timestamps and links to sources are in the description, and without further ado, let's go! In chronological order, the first things that might fail are the tanks themselves. Probably not the well-tested Starship, but the Super Heavy is not as fail-proof for now. During the cryogenic test, some mishap can very well happen that would lead to the destruction of both Super Heavy and Starship if they are stacked on top of each other, producing a pressure blow but probably no fireball. I would rate this risk as moderate, because Super Heavy tanks are mostly longer Starship tanks. Of course, after the pressure test comes the static fire test, and when there is combustion, there is also a lot of risk. While I think the Raptor engine is no safer than it was, the sheer number of engines at the bottom of the super heavy booster at full throttle will literally dig a hole in the concrete ground. The orbital launch tower will try to mitigate this issue, but it already caused the loss of the much smaller SN4 prototype, and that could very well happen again. In that case, expect a huge fireball and potentially a lot of damage to ground equipment. Unless we see a flame diverter of some sort under the launch tower, we will have to wait for the actual static fire to happen to know if it is safe. And for that reason, I would rate this risk as high. Now, let's suppose everything went well during test and liftoff. What could go wrong during the super heavy flight? The most likely unwanted event would be an engine malfunction. While it is unlikely that this would cause an explosion, the loss of power would mean an abort and a probable detonation of the flight termination system. The final version of Super Heavy will accommodate the loss of at least one engine, but this early prototype could not reach orbit in such an event. Because the Raptor becomes more and more reliable though, I think the risk is only moderate. What is unknown territory though is the aerodynamic stability of the rocket during flight. Because of the flaps on top of the vessel, the, the whole Starship Super Heavy stack is naturally unstable and relies on the engine gimballing to maintain its proper orientation. Nose pointing to space. But whether the engine's gimbal capacity is enough or not is yet to be proven. An aerodynamic instability is likely to result in the dislocation of the rocket, leading to a high altitude explosion, just as the Max Q test on the Crew Dragon. But because SpaceX now has such experience in that matter, I think the risk is in fact low. On any rocket, the separation events between the main booster and the second stage are risky events. Two vessels weighing multiple tons each and traveling at half a dozen kilometers per second in a thin but still existent atmosphere at a few meters from each other? I mean, what could go wrong? For starters, the separation could fail leaving the two vessels still attached. That's still an eventuality, but I doubt things will turn out to be that bad. What could happen, though, is what happened with the first Falcon rocket. The separation occurs, but either the two vessels are not separated enough or not stable enough and the two stages bump into each other. This is actually quite a common mishap with new rockets and I surely would feel some stress during this particular phase. All in all, I think the risk is moderate still because of the experience of SpaceX. After the separation, Starship will have to light up its three engines exactly at the right time. On the pad, Starship often had to delay the launch by a few minutes to accommodate for last minute concerns. That will not be possible while flying on top of the Super Heavy, and it is really possible that the whole flight fails because of one of the three Starship motors does not ignite. On this one, I'm not sure how to assess the risk. On one hand, the Raptor has a history of failed startups, but on the other hand, well, because of that history, I think SpaceX will focus on solving that specific issue. What do you think? 
moderate or high risk for this one? Tell me your thoughts in the comments below. Let's say everything goes according to plan and the Starship lights its engines and is heading to space. All three engines will have to work flawlessly for a very long time in order to reach a proper orbit. Given many Raptors have shown reliability issues in the past, it is not impossible that one of these motors fails during ascent. I think the risk is low though, the Raptor is getting more and more reliable, and if failure occurs sufficiently late enough into the flight, the remaining motors might be able to fulfill the mission anyway. Well, here is the real deal. The re-entry is a real unknown here. The Starship is covered in thermal protection tiles to sustain the very high heat of re-entry, but up to now this has only been calculation. Now it is time for the real deal, and Elon Musk said it is very likely to destroy the prototype. The re-entry phase is therefore very likely to fail, transforming the Starship into a fireball. Because the re-entry corridor is above the Pacific Ocean, I think very few people will be able to enjoy the show though. In the unlikely event that the Starship survives the re-entry, it will have to fly at very high speed and very high altitude towards the landing area. Starship already proved it was stable at low speeds and low altitude, but supersonic speeds at high altitude is another thing that might very well work at the first try or be unstable and impossible to steer, which would lead to a high altitude stall. All in all, I think this risk is moderate, given how well the early prototypes flew at low speeds. Here we are! Let's hope that against the odds, the Starship effectively reaches orbit and survives re-entry. There is still the problem of the landing. Yes, Starship did land successfully once. But the process is probably not completely sorted out yet, and the ship can endure some damages during any previous phase of a flight that could make the landing a failure. Because this is such a tricky thing to master, I think the risk of a failure during landing is also high. And that was the list of the 10 things I think are more likely to fail during the orbital test flight of the Starship. I would really like SpaceX to prove me wrong and nail that flight with the first try, but we know how they like to learn. Dare. Try. Fail. Try and fail again until it works. And I find that process beautiful. If you found this video useful, don't forget to like to help this video reach other people. If you want more videos from me, don't forget to subscribe. Here on your left is a video the YouTube algorithm has chosen for you. And on the right is a link to the playlist about SpaceX plans to colonize Mars. I hope you liked this episode and that I will see you in the next one. This is Getting to Space, signing off.